Hey Internet, welcome to another episode of Anatomy Bites. I, of course, am Scott Ford, your host. In this video, we're going to take a look at the epiglottis. Hey, so welcome back. If you haven't already heard, I'm running for Texas State Rep District 127 out here. It's currently December 2015. If you were wondering more about my campaign or even why I'm campaigning, check out the link down below. I'm running against a guy named Dan Huberty. He was caught uh, by some journalists doing some stuff he should not have been doing in Austin. And all I can say is if you're going to watch the video, it's not safe for work. And this is him coming right off the floor in Austin. So that's why I'm running. If you want more information, be sure to check down below. But you're not here for that. You're here to learn about the epiglottis. Yes, you are. You can admit it. It's okay. It's just between us. Anyhow, let's talk about the epiglottis. But before we do that, we have to look at something called the larynx. Now, the larynx is also known as the voice box. All right. It's composed of nine cartilages. And we're going to go into them, except for one, in any detail. I have the entire lecture part of my anatomy lectures available at my website, mrfortsclass.net, as well as some of them here for free on YouTube. But you can see that we have different uh, groupings or different uh, cartilages that make up the larynx. Some are singular, some are paired, meaning there's a left and a right side. We are most concerned, however, with something called the epiglottis. So the epiglottis is an important flap of elastic cartilage tissue. What elastic cartilage tissue is, it, actually, I have an entire video on the histology of the different types of connective tissue, so be sure to check that out, okay? But it's found at the entrance of the larynx, and it's spoon-shaped. So it's got this kind of spoon shape to it. And you can see in the image, you see that little thing sticking up, that little sticky up thing, that would be the epiglottis. And it projects you obliquely upwards behind the tongue and the highway bone. The highway bone, of course, being this bone right here, which is, of course, known for two things, not being directly articulating to any other bone and also being broken in strangulation victims. It's amazing what I have to read. Anyhow, at rest, when you're not eating or swallowing, just kind of chilling and breathing, it is pointing upwards. When we swallow, the epiglottis folds down to block off the trachea, and this helps direct the food and the fluids down the right path. So a little bit more about how this works. Okay, so for example, during swallowing, so you're eating, you swallow. Extrinsic muscles of the larynx are going to pull the larynx upwards towards the epiglottis. The tongue then pushes the epiglottis downward to meet it. Now, get this idea of just the tip of your tongue being your tongue. Your tongue is this humongous honking muscle that fills up a good portion of your oral cavity. So that, that's what we're talking about here. So we're not just talking about the top part of your tongue that you normally associate as being part of your tongue, okay? So the tongue pushes the epiglottis downward to meet it. The epiglottis closes and keeps the food and drink going in the right direction. Now, here's a couple of fun facts for you. Fact number one, the vestibular folds play a larger role in keeping you from choking to death. And of course, they don't get any credit. Number two, in infants, larynx, the larynx is higher in the throat and the epiglottis touches the soft palate. This allows the infant to both breathe and swallow at the same time. Kind of a cool little factoid there. And this last little factoid um, was an interesting Google search because I typed in, are there taste buds? And well, here's what Google's first result was. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Anyhow, but it would appear that there are taste buds on the epiglottis, just don't Google it at work. So that's going to conclude our very quick look at the epiglottis. Hope you're having fun studying out there. And until later, as always, goodbye for now.